What are you doing here? The same thing my father is doing to me in the palace. Calm down, Jalaluddin. You're paying the price for the deep-rooted hatred Tarkhan has for your mother. I was a stranger in the Sultan's palace. Your grandmother kept this hatred of hers for me all these years, and all because I was not from her tribe. She even waited until today to take revenge on me. That's what she thinks she's done. It's foolishness. Why should the Sultan allow himself to become the tool of the hatred and tricks of women. Half the commanders of the Sultan's army came from Tarkhan's tribe. By making Oslach his crown prince, the Sultan buys their swords and also manages to keep his army safe from being slaughtered. The truth is, when a sword is bought with such shame, it does not leave its scabbard when it comes to war, and the Sultan will be left alone. What the Sultan has to do is win over hearts and not swords. The Sultan's heart is with you, Jalaluddin. Hmm. I swear to God I would have given up what's rightfully mine if my father had stripped me of it out of his own will. Not because he fears his mother or her tribe. Look, I am afraid of Tarkin's hatred as well. Even much more than your father is. Don't let Tarkin take you away from me, Jalaluddin. If you don't go to the palace, that will weaken Oslak's position as Crown Prince. Don't let them consider you as a silent claimant to the Sultan's throne. Go to the palace and pledge allegiance to your brother. Don't tear apart your relationship that you have with your father and break your mother's heart by not going. Ah! What a wonderful blessing. You have truly graced the palace by coming here today. You know, I almost lost my sight trying to find the Amir Bukhara in all that fat and bulge. I'm actually amazed that I could see you at all. <laughs> so tell me, what's going on in Bukhara's paradise? From Khorazm to Iraq, I'm quite sure that a single fruit doesn't fall off a tree in a garden. Nor does a sheep give birth to a calf without you knowing about all of it first, Nazareddin. So please don't ask me what you already know. Don't be so sarcastic, Emir. The Sultan has arms and legs and eyes and ears, you know. You see, you and the rest of the Emirs are the Sultan's arms and legs, and I'm his eyes and ears. Well, may God grant the Prime Minister a very long life. I thought that the eyes and ears of the Sultan I, his Prime Minister. <laughs> but you know, you really cannot expect much from those weak eyes and even weaker ears. The truth is, the Sultan has many of those eyes and ears, O Mir Bukhara. I am one of the smallest among them, and of course, I am also a very naive person for wanting to express myself. Hmm. Tell me, do you know what I pray for night and day, Nazareddin? Good health for the Sultan and a long life for the Prime Minister, because in his absence, the Sultan will be surrounded by people who are just like you. People who are shadows, who walk and whisper in each other's ears, and have nothing else on their minds except for overcoming the wills of others in favor of yourselves and also your tribes. That they would know this place inside and out. Today, 
Today, it has been about 150 years that the great Kharasim dynasty has been ruling over this land. The son of this dynasty rises from the Amu River to Sindh, and everything there is from the east to the west. Right now, there is absolutely no one in any corner of the world who truly does not know the name and also the prominence of Sultan Alaeddin Muhammad Khwarazm Shah. And that being said, we must be truly thankful and grateful for the magnificent king that God has blessed us with. Because all of the affairs of the world, and also religion, cannot be handled properly without a strong and dominant government. But for every coming, there is a going. Mankind is mortal, and all of us are simply just guests for a certain number of days in this house which is called the world. The world that we spend our entire lives in. What remains is he, the one and only great, almighty, all-powerful God. O oh, Amirs, nobles, and commanders, on this auspicious day, the Sultan, based on long-standing tradition and interests, and in the presence of you, who are the emirs of different parts of the land, the commanders of his armies and the men of great stature and position, the Sultan chose Gotardin Oslag as his successor for now. And he will be recognized as the new crown prince. And from this day forth, after the Sultan, he is to be known as the new leader. He will be king, and coins will be minted in his name. In the name of the almighty and all-powerful God, and on my command, I proclaim you now as the 8th Khorazm King. May you live a long life. Congratulations. Congratulations. Doesn't the Emir Bukhar intend on congratulating the new crown prince at this time? Where is Jalal Eddin right now? Wasn't he supposed to be the new crown prince instead of Ozlach? Or am I mistaken in thinking so? Now, if you're a man of politics, you know that suppositions mean absolutely nothing. When it comes to politics, that is. Long live the Sultan. Long live the Sultan. Long live the Sultan. given to you, of the Crown Prince. All of you should know, the heart and sword of Jalal Adin belongs to the Crown Prince. We are having a celebration today, and I, just like any other father, would like to see both of my children at this special gathering, standing next to each other. Your ceremony is entertaining enough. I'm not a man of celebrations, father. I detest parties and receptions.
abajo. Jalal al-Din is a bit harsh. He knows war better than celebrations. Control yourself, son. You should honor your stature. It's Jalal al-Din who has to respect my stature, father. Even if you do become sultan, Jalal al-Din is still your elder brother. Have a good time on the occasion of this auspicious day.